everyone, it's Chelsea of Ice Dragon Cosplay, and we're back with a Lolita hair bow tutorial. So I'm trying to do more tutorials based off of Lolita fashion and J fashion in general, since one of my most popular videos ever was actually how to you take a thrift store dress and turn it into a Lolita dress. So you're going to need your fabric. Um, you don't even need like half a yard. This takes very little fabric, which makes it also a great scrap fabric project. You also need a way of measuring, scissors, interfacing. You can use iron-on interfacing if you like. In this video, I end up using the sew-in interfacing because it's what I had around the house. So go ahead and take your fabric. As you can see, I obviously have more than half a yard. And I'm going to measure a rectangle that is 20 inches wide and 7 inches tall. This is why the straight ruler is so helpful here, because it really makes the chalking it out easy. Once you're done, cut it out. Alright, and here's my rectangle. So you should have two. And then cut a piece of interfacing to match the rectangle size. You only need one piece. Alright, and we're back to our fabric. And this time we're going to make the tails of the bow. So for this, you want a piece that is about 4 inches wide and then 11 inches long. But before I get to that, I'm actually going to do the bow dog. I forgot I did that part first. And this is 6 by 5 and it's just a little rectangle. Sorry, I got my pieces mixed up there. You only need one of those, but since I have my fabric folded, I ended up with two. Who knows, maybe I'll make another bow. Okay, now we're gonna make our bow tails. Okay, and this, like I said, you want it to be about 11 inches tall or long and four inches wide. Now these can vary, you don't have to have one this long. I just like it because I think it looks cuter and kind of shows off the pattern a bit more. Now at the end, what you're gonna wanna do is angle it and chalk it. So you want the longest angle to be at about 11 and usually I angle it up so that the other side is about an inch shorter so we'll say 10. It's really important though that you want it to be about four inches wide because we're gonna have to do pleating work and if it's not four inches you're you're just not gonna have much to work with. So you need two of those four pieces in total. So cut two on the fold. So here's our bow knot. Our tie tails. You also need a bit of interfacing for each of those. I apologize for the background noise. Kittens are making a mess of things. Here's my interfacing pieces. And of course, my main bow part. That's all the fabric you need. go to the sewing room. So first step, like in all things with sewing, is we're going to iron our fabric. Now if you have iron-on interfacing, you're going to also, after ironing out the cotton parts, whatever your fabric is made of, you're going to iron on the interfacing to the wrong side of one of these. I obviously am not going to do that step because I have a sewing interfacing. So the real thing here, now this pattern doesn't really have a like a up or down, but if you are working with a definite pattern that has an up or down, you're just going to want to make sure that your fabric's lining up. 
so that the pattern is going in the correct way. So we're going to sandwich it so that the right side of the fabric are together and then the interfacing is on the top. And pin it. So we're only going to pin the sides. You don't need to worry about the edges. So basically we're pinning the long sides, not the short sides. And this is where we're going to sew as well. So we're going to leave it open on the short side. So of course you're gonna want your machine set up and basically you just, I have it at a very basic setting. Now, I have my tension correct, I have about added two for the width and I'm just gonna sew it along. And of course a straight stitch. Now I'm using a fabric that's kind of got a bunch of colors in it so I just picked the thread that best I thought would go be invisible. It's not too big of a deal with these bows because you're not gonna see it really any stitching work on them. This is obviously sped up. Don't sew this fast. <laughs> and it looks like I'm not going straight there, but my interfacing is much longer than my fabric on that side. Okay, once you're done, trim it. Trim, trim. So here it is all trimmed, and I'm going to flip it right side out. And press. Now after that, we're going to fold it in half and press it. I don't want a big crease, just enough so I can tell. Then we're going to fold it again so that my rough edges just slightly overlap that center crease. Like that. And I'm going to baste it now. So here it is with a base stitch in. And we're going to put that piece to the side now because we're done with it for now. We get to get everything else all set up. So I'm going to work on my tails, my bow tails. Same thing, we're going to iron those pieces first. And then we're going to sandwich everything. The right sides together, interfacing on the top. Then I'm going to pin the edges and then the angled bottom. So we're going to leave just the top of As always, just take your time and make sure that your fabric is flat and the sandwich is flat so that you don't get any weird twists or buckles. And then trim. Alright, we got our tails done. We're going to flip them right side out, which is probably the hardest part. <laughs> no, I lied. There's another part that's much harder. This is just like annoying and tedious. You could take your scissors, obviously unopened, to puncture out that little tip in a little bit better, or you can just leave it, and then we'll press them. Ta -da! Okay, now we're gonna pleat them. So I marked my pleats. Uh, the first one I marked starting at about half an inch. And then I counted seven ticks. 
and that's basically where I want that pleat like to meet itself. Then I started the other one at two inches, the two inch mark, and I same thing, counted six ticks. Now I've done the same to both sides, and we're gonna pin those pleats. So I'm just making sure that the side with pointy end is the side that's going to fold over and meet. Because I want to make sure my pleats are going the same direction on both ties. On both ends. I always find this side harder just because it's seems fumbly to do the pleats this way, but meh. <laughs> I like them, I don't know, I can do it. <laughs> Alright, so we got our ple pleats pin <laughs> with the tongue twister. <laughs> and we're gonna base those pleats in. So once we've got our pleats basted, we're going to attach the two tie ends together. The main thing is you just want to make sure that they're going in the same direction. So look where your long point is and like have them both facing downwards or you know, upwards in this case. And then we're not going to baste it, I actually just stitch it. And that's this piece done. We are almost finished too. So as you can see, my two pieces match. So, now we're going to take our bow knot and we're going to iron it. And then I'm going to make it like a hot dog and I'm just going to sew right there. Sew that bow knot. And of course, trim. This is exciting, we're almost done. I definitely classify this as a beginner to intermediate like difficulty. I don't think this is too hard of a project. And hopefully this tutorial makes it very simplistic to understand. Like I said, you can make bows smaller if you want, or bigger. This is just the size I like best. So now I iron it so that that seam is upward. Because we don't want it to be showing at all. Because it's going to go on the inside. So I'm just kind of figuring out how I want that to lie. And now we are going to do the accordion fold on our bow piece. I don't really know any better way to describe this. So that's why I was just showing it. Then where I usually fold it like a little bit when I add my bow ties. So just kind of play with it until you're happy with how it looks. And we're gonna take our bow knot, making sure that that seam is on the inside. I hold it in place with my top thumb, wrap it up, fold the raw edge in so that it covers up both raw edges nice and smooth. So fold and cover them up. Make sure you have a pin handy. I had to go grab one. <laughs> and then pin that in place. I'm trying to get a closer up look so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Because this is me. I want to say, I guess it's kind of, yeah, I guess this is like the most difficult part because it's very fiddly and you have, it just takes practice. 
But once it's pinned in place, you can kind of play around with it a little more, scrunch it up if you don't like the bow knot, puff out the bow some more. Okay, now I've gotten my needle. I always like a curved needle. And I've gotten my thread, and I'm just going to start doing a basic stitch to keep the bow knot in place. I don't do any special stitch, I'm just trying to make it stay. Because I'm going to have my barrette going over this part. Now, if you aren't comfortable with hand stitching, I know a lot of people also glue, just glue the bow knot shut. I don't want to do that because I want my bows to look more nice and professional and they'll hold up more with me hand stitching than with me hot gluing it. So, especially because you think this is going to be worn in someone's hair a lot, it's going to take a lot of wear and tear and hot glue is great, but it, it's not cure-all. And I'm sorry, I really tried to make this as easy to see as possible, but I know it, that sometimes my hand got in the way. I just making sure that I catch the full bow knot, not the rest of the bow, just the bow knot. I want it to just be sewn shut. I'm certainly not a fantastic hand sewer, but I'm sure if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> okay, so we're getting near the end. I'm going to go grab my bread. Same thing. You may not want to sew your bread in. You can glue it in, but I'm going to sew them in. So as you'll notice, there's those holes on either side, and we're literally going to sew it in by attaching, going through those holes. So I'll just pick which way I want to open it up and I get ready to sew through. So I just go underneath the whole bow knot and make sure my needle's coming through that little hole there. And, I, and I'm just going to go through and sew it. I go through about five times. I find that to be secure. You don't have to hand sew it, you can glue it in. I just want mine to be very professional, so. Now if you have enough thread, you can actually do really large stitching kind of back through to make it to the other side to sew the other hole in the barrette. If you don't, you're gonna have to re-thread your needle and do it. <laughs> just do the other side separate. But I'm lazy and I hate threading needles, so I try and make sure I have enough thread. And hey, you know, a second time over is just going to make it even more secure. Alright, I made it to the other end, and same thing, we're just going to slowly push the needle through the underside of the bow knot and make sure it comes out where the hole should be. same thing I do this about five to six times to make it nice and secure once I'm done with that I'm gonna tie it off right down for it and the bow is pretty much also gonna be finished too so that's cool There I am tying it off. And just snipping the excess thread. Ta da! Bow is finished. So I'm just gonna let you guys see it. I've puffed out the main part so that it looks a little more bowed outward. Here you can see the bread's nice and secure on there, so it's gonna take some. It can take some damage, you know. So, 
wear and tear after using it a few times. As always, thank you for watching my show. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.